What's going on you guys? It is late January. A few days left. I'm going to be going on a snowboarding trip soon. So this will be probably one of my last sessions, if not my last session of January. And I am up like $9,500 this month. So it's very good. Hopefully this session will bring me to 10K and hit that intro. Cheers. With the guy Branson, who has the Branson poker logs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, let's go! Yeah. Tell him he's got a lot of class, and it's all low. Get ready, because today's session covers a super action 5-5-10 table I was on. I bought in for $800, but had to add on 200 as my stack was dwindling from card death. But eventually, I pick up ace-queen off in the big blind. Action folds all the way around to the small blind who opens to $30. I three bet to $110. Small blind is short stack, so he just shoves for a little over 200 total. I make the call, board runs out, ace, 10, king, three, nine. My opponent flips over, ace, jack, and I take it down. Next, I get pocket kings in the cutoff. An early position player opens to $40. The hijack calls. Again, another three betting hand. I make it $150. Only the hijack calls. The flop comes ace high. And with a small C bet of $110, my opponent folds and I win another one. Nothing too crazy yet, but I promise, stick around. This session gets nuts. I pick up ace 10 of hearts under the gun. I open to $35 and get called by the low jack, big blind, and straddle. Flop comes out 10, 3, 6, rainbow. Great flop for me, so after the big blind and straddle check, I put out a third pot C bet of $50. No need to go too big as this board is pretty dry, but nobody folds the low jack, big blind, and straddle all call. Okay, the turn is a king, and the straddle decides to lead out for $100. Honestly, with four people in this pot, someone could easily have a better hand. This bet is suspicious. I feel like he hit the king, maybe hit two pair or something. I just fold. The low jack calls. At least I get to see what would have happened, and the river comes an ace. Bruh. Great. The straddle bets $100. The low jack folds. The straddle flashes a king. Whatever. I made a good fold at the time. Moving on. I pick up ace jack off on the button, and in this one, there's a double straddle to $20. The cutoff limps, and I, of course, go for the raise. I make it $80. The $20 straddle calls, the cutoff limper calls, and we're three ways to a flop of ace, four, seven with two diamonds. Action checks to me. I start off with a C bet of $90. It folds to the cutoff, who raises to $300. Oh boy. Now, I know this player quite well. If he had a better ace than me preflop, he would have raised instead of limping, but he could still be beating me with two pair or a set. On the other hand, this player likes to play a lot of speculative hands, so he could very well be making a move with a variety of straight draws, flesh draws, possibly even a weaker ace. Against this player, if he's got it, I'm going to pay him off anyway, so I decide to rip it all in now for $900. I want to put maximum pressure on any of his draws or hands that have equity against mine. He pretty quickly folds, and I take it down. Bomb pot. It's a bomb pot. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, okay, so I get ace jack off in the hijack. We all put $25 in the middle and we're going eight ways to a flop of ace queen nine rainbow. The action checks all the way to me. I have top pair and I start off with a bet of $75. Well, things don't exactly go according to plan. The cutoff calls under the gun plus one calls and the low jack calls four ways to a turn, which comes the deuce of clubs action checks to me. On one hand, I hate that I still have three opponents to deal with, but on the other, if anyone had a better hand than me, I think they would have likely raised the flop. This deuce is a total brick, and I don't want anyone seeing a free river. I continue betting for $300. Should look pretty strong. I'm fine with folds, honestly, but the under the gun plus one calls, and we're heads up to a river which comes a three. He checks. I just check back with one pair. He shows eight, nine of hearts for just a nine. <laughs> okay, let's go. I take it down. Next, I pick up five, six of diamonds under the gun. And from such an early position, this is just a fold most of the time, but we're deep. I'm here to get in the mix. I raise to $35. The cutoff three bets to 105. The straddle flat calls. 
this hand is definitely not one my opponents will be expecting. If I hit a hand, it'll be very disguised. I make the call, and the flop comes 3-4-9 with two diamonds. Dream flop for 5-6. I have a flush draw and an open-ended straight draw. Straddle checks. I check to the preflop three better, and he checks back. The turn is a six. Now I have a pair, and the straddle leads out for $200. I debate what I want to do here. This player plays a lot of hands, like the Alan Keating of the gardens. So even though he cold called the three bet, I can't exactly narrow his range. He could have a draw. He could have a pair. He could already have a boat. I just call to realize my equity, keep in his bluffs, and surprisingly, the cutoff calls as well. All right, let's get some help. The river comes another six. We hit trips. Very nice. And the straddle keeps betting for $600. I think whether to raise or just call, but I think if I raise, he's only really going to call me if he has a better hand. I just call. The cutoff folds. Music to my ears when the straddle says he missed. I show my cards and I scoop this massive, massive pot. Things are going very well and I pick up pocket jacks in the big blind. There's a $20 straddle, the under the gun limps, the hijack limps, the small blind limps. Time to bump it up. I make it $130. But then the under the gun limper, he doesn't just call. He raises to $350. Oh boy, the classic under the gun limp re-raise. From all my experience, this is usually a really, really strong move. Even in a super action game like this, I think there are better spots for me to take. So I get ready to fold, but then the hijack calls, the small blind calls. If I call, there's going to be almost $1,500 in this pot. It's $220 more. <laughs> okay, I'm set mining with jacks, I guess. And the flop comes deuce three for all clubs. The small blind and I check to the preflop razor, and he goes all in for $1,000. Everyone else folds, it's on me. <sighs> I have an overpair, but he could very well have a bigger overpair. I don't even have a club. Uh, it's $1,000 to call to win a pot that would be $3,500. So I have to win around 30% for this call to be profitable. Mm, it's ugly. Okay, I just fold. When he left, he told me he had pocket kings with the king of clubs, which, if it's true, I was in terrible shape. I believe him. Story checks out, but moving on. So I look down at 7 8 of hearts in the hijack. I opened it up to $35. The cutoff calls. The button three bets to $150. Okay, the small blind flat calls the $150. The straddle flat calls the 150. Like I said, super action table. Again, I have a more disguised hand that can get paid off big if I flop well. I call and the cutoff calls too. Five ways to a flop in a three bet pot. There's already over $750 in the middle. Goodness gracious, flop comes Jack Queen 7 Rainbow. We all check to the button who bets $800. I have bottom pair, but. This just ain't it. I got no other draws. I fold and the button takes it down. Now I'm in the $20 straddle and I pick up one of my favorite hands, 910 of hearts. Action folds to the button who opens to $65. Our Alan Keating man calls from the $10 straddle. I'm closing the action, so I'm more inclined to flat call rather than three bet. I just call and the flop comes 1036 with two diamonds. Okay, I flop top pair. Alan Keating checks, I check, and the button checks as well. Turn comes a four, Keating checks again. I still have top pair. I think it's likely I have the best hand. I bet $120. The button folds, but Keating calls, and the river is a deuce. Now he shoves for around $300, and I hate this too. He plays a lot of wonky hands, so he could easily have any five here, and honestly, he could have a lot of two pair hands that contain a two as well. Three, two, four, two, six, two, ten, two, all in his range. Ugh. I fold, and thankfully Keating shows me he indeed had the winning hand, pocket deuces, hitting a set on the river. 
Momentum is dying a little bit, but let's make a comeback with the Branson special, The Lucky Snowman. I'm in the low jack, there's a $20 straddle, so I open a $60, the hijack button and $20 straddle call, and we're four ways to a flop of 7-4 deuce with two spades. All right, an overpair with eights, it's the best you can get without flopping a set. I start off with a bet of $125. Well, the hijack is a short stack. He goes all in for $260. I'm ready to snippety snap it off, but then the button calls. Huh, this could be troublesome. What does the button have that he's willing to call when I bet and someone else raises all in? Maybe a seven suited, maybe nines or tens, a draw of some kind, maybe even a slow played set. Huh, I don't know what to do, but. I do know I should be the only person here with aces, kings, queens. I decide to turn my over pair into a bluff. I raise to $700, and this move should look really strong. I'm mostly repping a big over pair here. It should never be a bluff because the hijack is already all in. I'm going to have to beat him regardless of what the button does. So now if the button has nines, tens, something like that, it should be very difficult to make the call. Please <laughs> just fold. He thinks about it for a little over a minute, but then makes the call. Okay, please do not have a slow played set. Please just have a draw here. The turn is an offsuit 10. I check to see what my opponent does, but he checks back. Good sign. I think a set would have bet here and the river is a six. All right, please, please have a missed draw or a five, six and river to pair or something. I check one more time. He checks back. Okay, I show my cards and he shows pocket jacks. Oh man, uh, the hijack shows a seven off. So I was ahead of him, but the lucky snowman just can't pull off the dub this time. Don't cry, snowman. Don't leave me this way. After that, I take down a small pot with a six suited in the cutoff, then lose a small pot with ace queen, but really I don't get into any more significant hands. Eventually it's getting late, so I rack up and call it a night. Oh man, <laughs> that was a bummer. I was in a very, very good game and things were going really, really well. I was up uh, almost $2,000 at one point and then things started crashing down and I got put in spots. I made some good folds, and I tried with that pocket eights to uh, to basically sort of sort of turn it into a bluff. Like I was trying to get nines and tens to fold out while also like putting some draws into some weird spots. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate. I was in for a thousand and out for fourteen twenty six for a profit of four hundred twenty six dollars, which brings my monthly total of January to like $9,900 profit. Uh, couldn't quite hit 10K, <laughs> almost did, but couldn't do it. But thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.